Okay, what we often hear is that jobs in the future are not presently available today. In a study done in 2017 by Dell Labs and Institute for the Future, in 2030, which is merely 11 years away, 85% of the jobs do not exist today. In another report by World Bank in 2018, they actually bucketed jobs into three different buckets. So one bucket is jobs that will stay or, or still exist from today. Second is jobs that will be new, that's created for the future. And third is a bucket of jobs that will no longer exist in the future. So I, I just picked three jobs from this report that they say will not exist in the future. Accountants and auditors, um, financial analysts, and lawyers. Okay. This is the report, by the way. It's not me. So, what do you do? How do you react to this? And how do you plan? You know, what I understand in the audience is mainly comprising students. How do you think about your jobs in the future? So my message is, firstly, hold your horses. Relax, bro. Don't panic. I stand in front of you as Exhibit A, a person who has had 13 jobs in the past 25 years. And I hope to share with you how do you survive and then move to thrive in all the jobs that you take on. So the objective is really that you can glean some of the lessons um, for the future. Thank you. So let's start from the beginning. Job number one. I was qualified as an architect. I took my bachelor's. I took my postgraduate diploma in architecture. So I worked in an architectural practice. So that's a natural place for, for an architect to work. So after three years, I could not imagine doing anything else. You know, I was, my, my pay was going up. I was doing more exciting projects. And then suddenly, boom, came the 1997 financial crisis and suddenly design jobs dried up. Fortunately, um, while I was an architect, I was teaching at a local design institute. And what I was doing part-time became job number two, became my full-time work. So I started teaching in architecture. And then something else that happened, I started teaching web design. Not many people at the time actually knew how to do web design, HTML programming. This is 1996. So I was actually drafted by the uh, institute to, to start a class because they couldn't find anyone who knew uh, internet programming. So something from my hobby became my job. And then with a fellow lecturer, another architect, and this was the time where the sort of the dot com started heating up. Um, so we said, let's start the company together. So that became job number three. So job number three was really doing an online discount coupon system. And where you could get discounts you cannot get anywhere else from big brand names. And the value proposition that we offered was, you know, most of the time if, if you cut out a coupon from a newspaper, from a magazine, or you receive something in the mailbox, your uh, the, the person that, or the company that receives the coupon doesn't know who you are. So the value proposition to companies at the time was whatever we gave, we can give statistical analysis of who uh, the people who use your coupons were. Just demographics, not personal information. So that's the value to companies. And then we had an investment by a New Zealand investment firm for about 5 million ringgit for 30% of the company. We thought everything was going great. Let's go for listing, etc. And then Boom, came the 2000 dot com bubble. So that was job number three, sort of gone. So then job number four was really, you know, you start looking for work and 
um, I became a lecturer again, this time in, a, in an institution whose headquarters is based in Cyberjaya, may sound familiar to you. And the institution actually exists in Edu City. So I, I was a lecturer there for about one semester. And then I got job offer number five. So job offer number five was a tech consulting company. I, I didn't, I have no qualifications in technology, but I had learned technology along the way. I learned programming on my own. I became the chief technology officer of my own company. And so they said, oh, you have the right requisite skills to do this new thing called e-learning. So that was job number five. So I implemented in this Fortune 500 company e-learning throughout the organization throughout the world and completed in about three to four years. Then another friend invited me to start up a venture, venture capital fund, which became job number six. We couldn't quite raise funds, um, so that was only around for a year. And then went on to job number seven, where, um, you know, the, since things didn't really work out, I said, okay, let's, why don't I work for myself again? So I, I started this technology consulting firm, had three clients, and, um, you know, things were going okay, until client number three said, why don't you come and join us? And, and that became job number eight. So job number eight was with a sovereign wealth fund, uh, doing GLC transformation work in corporate governance and K-12 uh, education transformation. Job number nine came after I completed all those projects. And in 2011, another private equity firm called me up and said, come, uh, why don't you help us do education? And after, after that private equity invested in university, they said, why don't you become the CEO of that university, which became job number 10. Job number 11 was once I had finished moving things, um, you know, achieving what I want to achieve at the university. So this um, uh, sort of government development institution wanted to set up an investment holding company. They said, you know, why don't you help with, with that? So that's what I did. Once the company was set up, I was called into job number 12, where, um, to undertake a corporate transformation program within a real estate investment firm. And upon completion, I'm now managing an education hub somewhere in Malaysia. You know. Okay, so I, I didn't want to belabor too much on the jobs that I had. What I hope to inform to you are First three, what are the overarching lessons that you get from you know, having gone through 13 jobs? When you worry about the future of jobs, what are the things that will help guide you? And then uh, what are the key takeaways that I hope will be useful for you that you can implement in your own journey in seeking jobs? So first, the observations. Only one, arguably two, of my job, so based on my qualification, which was the first two. First as an architect, second as a lecturer in architecture. And beyond that, after uh, number three to 13 were really based on um, what I call cumulative experience. You know, I, got, I, I, I started learning web design as a hobby, and then it became my job. And I set up a company for one, Corporation, then other companies called me to set up companies for them in other corporations. So your qualification today is important, but does not restrict you to the sort of work that you will do. What you do or what you can do is the one that leads you to your future jobs. So first is really formal academic qualification is important as a starter. But number two is really your experience, and this is where I think if you have an opportunity to work in different things, please do, because that adds to your experience. So the third observation is really interesting. 
10 out of the 13 jobs were by invitation. Not me seeking the job. Yeah. So the first job, okay lah, that one was my brother-in-law's company. So that one, and he was living in my house, so he had no choice but to give me the job. If not, my father would have kicked him out. So that was by invitation. But the other jobs were really about people who knew, who knew me. And um, one important lesson, I think, which I'd like to impart is do not burn your bridges. You know, whenever you're in any particular job, don't burn your bridges. Keep good relations. Um, and, and you never know what comes out from there. You know, some of the jobs I worked on for the Sovereign Wealth Fund, it was my, my subordinate who actually invited me to go on to the job. Some of the other jobs, it was my boss, ex-boss, who invited me to go over the job. Some are just people who knew me by, um, you know, by, by connection or through experience or we've worked together before. Keep good relations. Don't burn your bridges. Because, you know, you never know where, um, how useful it is further down the, uh, the line. And then I like to share, okay, how do you move from surviving a job to thriving in a job? Okay? I think surviving is kind of no brainer. Lah. I mean, you do what you have to to keep your job. You know? But how do you thrive? So number one, there's this quote by Richard Branson that says, if somebody offers you an opportunity of something you've never done before, take it. And then you learn what to do after that. Okay, take it first. Because this, remember what I said about cumulative experience? You only get cumulative experience when somebody offers you an opportunity. So when somebody offers you an opportunity, grab it and then learn it. Learn how to do it. Okay? So, or, or, or learn how to do it later. So, the second lesson is how do you do it later? And this is where I think, from my 25 years, of working experience. It takes you about two weeks to become a pseudo expert. Only two weeks. But you gotta work really hard. Number one, you read like mad about the, that job, you know, the subject matter. Uh, read, or you kids now watch YouTube videos, you know, shortcut lah. But read and find out as much as you can about that subject matter. Once you've done that, Talk to somebody who knows about it a lot. You know, then you get the wealth of experience, the tacit knowledge that you don't get in books, you don't get in uh, you know, YouTube videos even. And ask them questions that uh, you, know, you may be afraid to ask other people. And you'll be surprised how people are willing to share. You know, people are just waiting, you know, just like, who's going to ask me a question? Huh? Or well, somebody asks you a question, they will share, they will share. You know, this is a human trait. We're social beings. We want to share. So talk to people who are experts. And one thing, you know, I mean, there's been a lot of talk about what's the best thing that's come out of the internet. You know, apart from Google Maps, which gets me to where I usually can't get to, I think the most powerful thing for me, even up to today, is discussion forums. You know, when I was le learning web programming uh, in HTML 1.0 at the time, you know, you, you learn from books, etc. But before you go to sleep, you post one question on an internet forum. By the time you wake up, because it's a global thing, you come up with 20 solutions from other people. And, and who's not been to Laoyat discussion forum? It's got like every possible discussion happening in, on Laoyat. You know, so, so it's a tool for you where you can learn quickly, and this is how you learn very quickly through other people's experience. Don't, don't start from scratch and say, oh, oh my God, I got 20 books to read. No, you, you live through them, and you get the gist out of them, and then start talking to people. And, and people are willing to share, and internet forum will show you, really underline to you how people are willing to share. You know, everybody wants to contribute. And that's the beauty about the internet. That's what makes the internet work. It's the content. And third, and I think probably one of the most important lessons is really stay humble. 
stay humble. I mean, this goes against some of the leadership sort of models that say, oh, you got to be out there, you got to be, you know, you got to be vocal, you got to be visible. But without humility, you do not learn. You know, the prerequisite to actually learning something meaningfully is humility. And whenever I work for any of those 13 companies that, um, that, that I, I worked with, the first thing I look for the leader, in a leader, is humility. Because humility almost naturally leads to integrity, almost leads naturally to being open, you know, having a meaningful conversation. And that are the factors that leads to your growth in that particular um, job or vocation. So, three things to remember. First, um, you know, you get invited to jobs, so don't burn your bridges. You know, uh, you should always try to learn new things and, and remember to stay humble as you go through the journey. And you know, hopefully we get invited into better and better things. So I will end with, by paraphrasing Marshall McLuhan, you know, one of the great futurists um, from Canada, when to say, for jobs of the future, don't worry if you haven't read the Future of Jobs report. Just, you know, potentially try follow the advice that I've given. Stop thinking about a job as a way to earn a living. And I hope, I hope the lesson comes from what I've shared is it's more important to learn a living. You have to keep learning. Thank you.